Today is part three. I don't know how long the series will last. I'll just keep going as long as the Holy Spirit says continue. Last Sunday, I shared with you part of the life of Joshua uh, as one of the doers of the world. He said, as for me and my house, will we serve the Lord? Today, we look at the life of Moses where he made a decision for the Lord. And I pray that God will speak to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Doers of the world, on whose side are you? Number one, it is time to grow up. It is time to grow up. In Hebrews 11, 24 that we read, it says that when Moses was come of years, when Moses grew up, when Moses matured, he discovered whom he was. He discovered he was not meant to be an Egyptian prince. That he was called to be a deliverer of the children of Israel. The Bible said he refused from that time to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. It's time for you, just like Moses, to grow up and understand what is good for your life. It's time for you to grow up and understand what you need to put behind you. Before Moses got to this point, he enjoyed the title of being called Prince Moses. Everywhere he went, Prince, yeah. Prince Moses, yeah. He enjoyed the privilege of the palace. He enjoyed the comfort of the palace. He enjoyed the riches of the palace. He enjoyed the glory and the honor of the palace. He enjoyed the security of the palace. But when he grew up, he realized for as long as he's in that palace, he cannot fulfill destiny. What is the question for you and the message for you? What are you enjoying that is not good for your future? What is it that you are enjoying that is not good for your career? I use the illustration during the first service. You suddenly find yourself, they sack you in the office. Oh, I don't like that office. They're bad, bad people. You prayed and fasted. You got another job. Then they sacked you again. And then you got another job. Then they sacked you again. <laughs> what is it that you are doing that is not good for, for your life? That could be many things that you are doing. For some of us, it's, you, you cannot submit yourself to authority. Oh, no, I can't take it. I can't take it. Eh, go and start your company. Hello? If you can't take it, what do you do? Eh, go and start your company. I just can't take it. Who are there to talk to me like that? Uh, continue. What is it that you are doing that is not good for your health? You know that that thing is not good. Maybe it's the wrong food you are eating. Eh, Pastor, but it is sweet. Ah, it's go ahead. Eat your life away. What is it that you are drinking that is not good for your health? You know it. Eh, but Pastor, it is sweet. It's time to grow. It's time to grow up. I know God is speaking to somebody here. There are some things in your life, your habit, your lifestyle that is not good for your life. When Moses grew up, he said, no, I refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. While I enjoy the privilege, this will not lead me to my future. I pray for somebody here. Whatever it is that you are doing that is not good for your future, you will surrender in the mighty name of Jesus. What are you doing that is not good for your finances? Are 
I used the example during the first service. I was somewhere recently where there was some sort of celebration and it came time to, to take photographs. And we all gathered together. I brought out my phone. I gave to them, you can use this phone to, to take the photograph. They looked at it and said, no, you can take your phone. Let's use another one. Because they saw that that phone is old, 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 old generation. Somebody next to me said, I hope you got the message. That this, your phone is old. And I looked at it. And I saw the phone that they brought out. And, they, and I looked at them. These small boys. The phone they brought out to take photograph. We buy my own multiple times. And yet, I'm probably 100 times richer than them. They are spending their life away. Look at your neighbor. What are you doing that is not good for your life? Oh, I must buy the next, the next phone. I must buy the next one. I must buy the one that is ready. Keep buying. Tomorrow is coming. Maybe that's when you, you go and join welfare. They begin to give you welfare. Because you have wasted your future. Is somebody hearing something this morning? In that setting, I was the boss. In this setting I just described to you, I was the most senior person. But they told me to keep my phone. I pray for somebody here. Whatever is not good for your life, that is not good for your future. Just as Moses grew up, and decided to change. From today you will change in the mighty name of Jesus. What is it you are doing that is not good for your marriage? Today, counseling session. Tomorrow, counseling session. It's time to look inwards. Very recently, somebody sent me a message. Ah, Pastor, we need to try and intervene again. These people have started fighting again. They have started crying again. They are back to where they were many years ago. I said, me? No. No. I'm not doing it again. You cannot delegate obedience. That's what my, that was my response. You cannot delegate obedience. The pastor will counsel. The pastor will share the word of God. But you must obey the word of the Lord. If you expect peace in your home, Obey the word of God. Obey the counsel of God. You cannot delegate it. Today there is joy in your home. Tomorrow there is crisis. There is sorrow. You keep going up and down. Check your life. What are you doing? What are you doing? That is not good for your marriage. I prophesy upon the life of somebody here. Whatever it is that you have been doing, that is causing you pain, causing you sorrow, causing you to keep going up and down. May God give you the grace to abandon in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Number two, walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. The Bible said, by faith. Moses took a decision. Let's open to that passage, Hebrews eleven twenty four. You see the first two words. What does it say? By faith. Moses decided to abandon the palace and to trust in God. Moses did not have the money to, 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 to live on. He did not have the connection. He did not have the hand. But he said he has come to the realization that his confidence will not be in the palace. His confidence will be in the almighty God. I don't know who you have been believing, trusting, hoping, hanging your hopes on. It's time for you to look, to look up. 
Moses said it's time for him to believe in the God of righteousness, Jehovah Sikeno. He knew that what was going on in the palace, what was going on was not good. Even though he was enjoying the riches, he said enough is enough. I will put my life in the hands of the Almighty. And I said, God called Jehovah. The beginning. The one who knew you before you were born. It is time for you to put your life in his hands in the mighty name of Jesus. There is one called the Omega. Let's go back to the sermon. Called the Omega. Is the ending. When Moses took that decision, he was saying, I have decided to leave the palace and to trust in the Omega. How many of you are ready to trust in the Omega? As you put your confidence in him, may he make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus. That Revelation 1 verse 8 says, is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the one that was, the one that is, the one that will be, the all. That's what Moses was saying. He said, by faith, he decided, I'm no more going to answer the name Prince. Because there is a God in heaven. That makes the difference. If Moses continued and it became what God wanted him to, be, to become, where will he give the glory to? To the palace. Who give the glory to the palace rather than to God? Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, The righteous shall live by faith, the just shall live by faith not by sight. I don't know what it is you have been struggling with. But today, as you shift your focus from trusting in man, for trusting in things, the almighty, the Alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end will make a way for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, God will not share his glory with any man. God will not share his glory with any man. When Moses took that decision, he said, I refuse from today to be called a prince. He was saying, in essence, I know God deserves all the glory. If I stay here, Pharaoh will think is the one that made me. Some of the failures you have experienced, because God says, if I give you what you want at this time, you give the glory to someone else. Hello? Some of the reasons why you are failing or you are not succeeding in what you are looking for is because if you get it now, the glory will go to someone else rather than to God. That's what Moses was saying. I will look up to heaven. And I shared a few examples during the first service and I will share it again for those who were not here. I remember when I was growing up and life was really tough. It wasn't even guaranteed that I would go to, to university. I, I didn't know how that will come, how it will come to pass. You have heard some of this before. I went everywhere for somebody to give me money to go to school. There was no one. Nothing, no help came. And now I can say boldly that God is my helper. If all the people that I went to had helped me, we would be taking the glory today. I went, like I, you have heard before, I started from the beginning of Broad Street. I would knock the first door, open, went to the first office, Young man, what are you looking for? 16 year old boy. What are you looking for? I want to go to school. I don't have money. Can you help me? <laughs> Did anybody give you an appointment? I said, no, I just want to see the MD. Get out of here. They drove me away. The next build, the next build, the next build. I kept on going. They kept on driving me away. That must have been God. Because if they had answered me, we would be getting the glory today. 
I remember there was a man called Abiola, rich man. I said, okay, I will go to Abiola. I, I hear he's a very rich man. He's a very kind man. I found my way to Ikeja. They didn't allow me in. But I dropped the letter. Sir, I want to go to school. I don't have money. Help me. 1986, till today, no response. Till today, oh. 39 years, no response. Part of the reason why you are not making progress is because you are trusting a man. I pray for somebody here. The grace to look up to God, the Almighty. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. But I did not stop. I kept on looking towards man. And if Abiola won't give me, uh, there is somebody they call Eleganza. Instead of saving the money that I have, I was using it for transport. Little money left look, using it for transport. I went to Eleganza by that toll gate area. So, hey, this man will help me too. They didn't allow me in. I left the letter. Again, since 1986. No answer. Yeah, okay, if the people in Lagos are stingy. There is somebody I hear, they call him Arish Shekola, he lives in Ibadan. These Lagos people are stingy people. I, I entered bus, I went to Ibadan. I got to the place. Of course, they won't let me in again. I dropped the letter. Till 1986, no answer. Until you learn to look up. You keep failing. Rise on your feet and say, Father, my hope is in you. <laughs> Cry to God, my hope is in you. You are enough for me. You are sufficient for me. My hope is in you. Moses said, I refuse to put my confidence in the palace. I refuse to put my confidence in the palace. I will trust in the Almighty. My hope is in you. I will trust in the Almighty. I refuse to put my confidence in man. Father, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I should put that confidence in God. May God prove himself in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Please take your seat for a minute. Let me share one more testimony. Which again I share during the first service. But I, I just want to be sure you, 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 you get enough practical experience to understand what Moses was trying to do. That's why the Psalm 1 is titled The Doers of His Word. On whose side are you? Many years ago when my wife and I just got married we were hoping that the children would start coming. Oh, delayed. We had a delay. I said, okay, we will we, we, we pray more. I shared the story. We, we started out in latter rain in Ikeja. And the baby was not coming. I said, oh, okay, maybe this prayer here is not hot enough. Ask your neighbor, that started to sound like you. Hey, maybe this prayer is not hot enough. I was a member of this church that some years, maybe one or two years ago, we started. I started noticing I don't see her anymore. We sent somebody. I go and find out. We have not been seen. When they, when they contacted us, ah, he said, look, my problem is more than your prayers. The, the kind of prayers you are praying here, my problem are too <laughs> Real life story. The person used to sit on this side. <laughs> the problem that I have is more than the prayer you prayed. And it's because he has not even had my own story too. It's not how hard you try. It's on whom you look enough to. Oh, we left Latare. Then we said that we had that. I say that is a church in, in, in somewhere in Ketu. They can pray. We, we ran there. Just a shed, a small shed. And truly, if you are not strong, <laughs> they are praying like this. You think their head will come up. And it's because you don't have a problem. Maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. So my wife and I headed up to the place and we started praying, started praying. 
And after a while, they, they declared a fast for us. They said, hey, you are trusting God for a child. They said, yes. So okay, for the next so many days, don't eat, don't drink. Ah! When we started, no, no food, no drink. After a while, my wife and her, at this rate, we will die. At this rate, we will die. Real life story. I remember a particular day, we could not even stand. We sat on the floor. And we're looking at ourselves. <laughs> I'm sorry for you at this rate. You will die. You know, <laughs> real life story. Drive fast. Nothing happened. And then somebody must have told us. They said that somewhere, there's one mountain somewhere. If you go to that mountain and pray. I said, well, I'm not going to any mountain. You, you, you can go. She went. Came back empty-handed. And when she has retired now, there's some, a, a, a church also, I got to know, white garment church, they said, look, come, if you go and pray in one bush, if you go to one bush and, so, and, and pray, things will work. I said, I follow them. Go and pray in one bush. We came back empty Empty-handed. God will not share his glory with any man. 1998 was when I traveled for my masters. We ended up we were in the U.S. We ended up in a small church, a redeemed church there. As we sat down, after the service, in the second row, I mean the row just behind us, the service has finished. Mm. Man just walked to us. Said, bro, sisters, how are your children? Said, they are fine. You know the way you use, you use bold face? Hey, they are fine. He looked at us again. He said, how are your children? Said, actually, we don't have. Said, that's what the Lord laid in my heart. That's what they told us. Said, that's what the Lord laid in my heart. To come and pray with you. We, we have never seen this brother before. We don't know him. He didn't know us. So the Lord told me to come and pray with you. Call the long story short. He ended up in our house. He did a vigil with us. We don't know this brother. And then on that night when he came, he began to minister to us. And before we pray, we said, Look, actually, we are tired. We, we, we've tried, though. But now we are just about using some, some fertility drugs. Maybe that will help. And he looked at us and he said, okay, if you take it and it works, to whom shall you give the glory? My wife and I looked at ourselves. Said, no, we are not taking this medication. We put it by the side. He prayed with us. He did vigil with us. And lo and behold, the child came. God will not share his glory with any man. Rise on your feet and cry to God. Father, I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you. I cease from my labor. I cease from my struggle. I put my trust in you. The same way you came through for Moses when he decided to look up rather than trust in the palace. When he decided to trust in you and not in the palace, you made a way for him. Father, I put my trust in you. Send help, O oh God. Send help, O oh God. Send help, O oh God. I put my confidence in you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Before you see that, as I was preparing the sermon, God reminded me of Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. It says, if the Lord opens a door, no man can shut. And if God closes a door, no man can open. In other words, God has the final say. He said, Father, you have the final say. Please open the door of joy unto me. Cry to God. You alone have the final say. You alone have the final say. 
Moses said, I choose not to be called a prince anymore. My hope is not in the palace. You alone, you have the final say. Open the door of progress unto me. Open the door of joy unto me. As I grow up today, as I make up my mind to be wiser, open the door of joy unto me. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You can take your seat. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. God will never share his glory with any man. Everything that you are today belongs to God. And everything you will ever be in your life, all glory belongs to God. Number four. As the message gets tougher and tougher, the joy of wickedness does not last long. The joy of wickedness does not last long. You may have been wondering, why did Moses choose to abandon the palace? <laughs> because the palace was progressing on the sorrow of the children of Israel. The more the children of Israel went into pain, the more the palace prospered. The more the Egyptians prospered. The Israelites, the Bible said they built beautiful houses that the Egyptians lived in while they dwelt in sheds. The Israelites we cook the best food and they will eat in the palace and in Egyptian houses. But the Israelites were made to wait and eat the leftover from the Egyptians. Moses saw the wickedness of Egypt. He saw the wickedness of Pharaoh. Even though he was enjoying in the palace, he realized that this cannot last. Let's go to verse 25 of Hebrews 11. Let's open to it. Hebrews 11 verse 25. Hebrews 11 verse 25. So Moses chose rather to suffer. Please put King James Version. Let's, let's always start with King James Version unless I ask you we're different. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He had a choice to stay in the palace and eat good food, drink good wine, sleep in super comfortable bed. But he discovered that he was enjoying the fruit of wickedness. The children of Israel, they built schools that their children were not allowed to attend. They made clothes, beautiful clothes, that they were not allowed to wear. The palace prospered at the expense of the children of Israel. The pain of the children of Israel produced the gain of the palace. And the sorrow of the children of Israel produced the joy of the Egyptians. Moses said, no more. Let's go back to the psalm. The question for you and the message, what about you? Are you benefiting from the pain of others? Look at your neighbor, highball to highball. Are you benefiting from the pain of others? 
Some will say, ah, if it doesn't get spoiled for somebody, it cannot be good for another. Have you heard of that before? In fact, there is a saying in Yoruba, to Baba Jeffrey Yonko. Ah, ah. The joy of wickedness does not last long. Are you building your joy on the sorrow of someone else? I remember a frank conversation that I had with a very close person to me many years ago. I said to her, things are good for you now. But do you know that you are building your joy on the sorrow of someone else? Oh, you are having a pleasant life now. But do you know that somebody is crying because of what you did? But the message is for you too. What are you doing? Are you benefiting from something that is creating pain and sorrow for someone else? Now we can make it practical. For married people, for example. Oh, you are messing around, enjoying life with some other people. Why the woman that struggled with you when you had nothing is abandoned? Uh, keep enjoying. The joy of wickedness does not last long. Yeah, it doesn't last long. Or you are the woman mistreating the husband, showing no regard, and the husband is feeling, you know, there was one that spoke to me recently. Maybe about sometime last year, I looked at him and I almost cried. He said, let me just tell you, in the last few months, I have thought of committing suicide four times. He said, sometimes the way my wife talks to me, it's like I am a worthless human being. Real life story. The joy of wickedness does not last long. Moses said, I will choose to suffer affliction with the people of God that enjoy the wickedness in the palace. I pray for somebody here this morning. In any way that your joy is producing sorrow for somebody else, in any way that you are benefiting from an arrangement that is causing pain to somebody, may God give you the grace to stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Rise on your feet and say, Father, help me to put an end to any form of wickedness that I may be benefiting from or that I may be part of. Cry to God. Moses said, no more. I refuse to benefit from the gains in this palace that are built on the sorrow of the children of God. I refuse. Cry to God. If anything that I am doing that is causing pain to others, anything that I'm enjoying that is causing sorrow to another, Father, please help me to stop today. Cry to him. Because the benefit, the joy of wickedness will not last long. It will not last long. Cry to God. If I am benefiting, if I'm benefiting from anything that is causing pain to other people, Father, today, give me the grace to stop. If your husband is sorrowful because of you, it is time to stop. If your wife is sorrowful because of your action, it's time to stop. If someone somewhere is crying while you are rejoicing, it's time to stop. The joy of wickedness does not last long. That's what Moses did. He said, I'm, I'm, I cannot be part of this arrangement anymore. May God help you to stop in the mighty name of Jesus. Please take your say. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 11. Isaiah 3 verse 11, put it on the screen as I pray for you with this on this fourth point. Isaiah 3 verse 11. 
say woe to the wicked for he shall be healed with him for the reward of his hands shall be given unto him anyone that is building their joy on this pain of others ah, it's for, a, it's for a while God is coming back to reward them in abundance May God deliver you from the hand of the wicked. And in any way that you have been wicked, may God pull you out today in the mighty name of Jesus. Point number five, as I close. Choose to be on the Lord's side. Choose to be on the Lord's side. Even if painful for the moment. Even if painful for the moment. I'll give you real life examples. And you examine yourself and decide on whose side you are. That's why the sermon is titled, Be a Doer of the Word. On whose side are you? When Moses took that decision, said, he refuses to be in the palace anymore. He would rather suffer with the children of God. That was not an easy decision. Because the children of God had no money. They had no comfort. But Moses decided, no. Let me leave the palace and suffer with the righteous. Matthew 7, verse 20 to 21. Matthew 7, 20 to 21. says, by their fruit. By their fruit. In other words, God knows the side you are on. Whether you are on a side or whether you are on the side of those that are opposed to him. Say, not all that call me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of God. This is where I want you to examine your life and decide today on whose side are you? There are evidences to confirm on whose side you are. Seven of them I want to go through as I close the sermon. And as you look at yourself in the face of those seven, God will show you whose side you are on. How can you tell if you are on the side of God? Seven things. There are more but just seven. Number one, as they put on the screen, Mercy. Me, mercy. Those who are on the side of God are merciful people. Hello. This is a mirror by which you measure yourself. Matthew 5 verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Maybe one of the reasons you have been struggling in life is because you have refused to forgive others. Hello? <laughs> Maybe the challenges you are having is because in your heart you are still holding some people guilty. Mercy is not easy. Forgiveness is not easy, but is an evidence of whether you are on the side of God. All eyes closed. Let me make this call very quickly. In your heart, there are people that you have just you have decided you can't forgive. I don't know what they've done to you, but that you, you just have not been able to find a place in your heart to forgive them. Just lift up those hands. I want to pray with you very quickly. God bless you. Just leave all eyes closed, please. All eyes closed. Thank you. Just lift up those hands. Just lift up. I don't know what they did, but God is saying to you, release these people so that you can receive your own blessing. As you show mercy, as you forgive those who have offended you, the grace for you to move forward as well, receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Example number two, evidence number two. 
truth. Proverbs 12, verse 22 says, Lying leaves are an abomination to the Lord. Lying leaves are an abomination to the Lord. But they that did truthfully, there is delight. Are you struggling with lying? You see, when Moses said, I would rather suffer with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of palace, he was making a choice to stand on the side of righteousness. On whose side are you? Are you still indulging in lying and struggling with the truth? Number three, humility. Those who are on the side of God have learned to humble themselves. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 to 6, says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. When you are on the side of God, you will humble yourself. Because God will fight against the proud. That's why he says in closing in that verse 6, Say, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due season he will lift you up. The reason for today's sermon is that you can make a shift. I don't know what area you have been struggling that you are not on the side of God. You have not found a way to forgive people. You are struggling with truth. You are struggling with pride. Or contentment. The fourth one. You just have to make oh, I, I pass so I just have to make it. If I keep believe, if I keep saying this here, I want to pray, I want to fast, I want to do things the God way, I, I will be left behind. Oh, you, you, you want to also like them too, do the things that they do so that you can make up. <laughs> Have you forgotten 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 to 7? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Many of you that are, you are trying to keep up, you are trying to match up. Oh, and maybe even your wife or your wife say, can't you see the other man? Can't you see the kind of car they are driving? Can't you see the kind of house they are living? Ah. You know that's a saying. It says, and it will more be. Can you tell me what it is? It's a big You will also die in the hustling. Because you don't know what they have done. You don't know what they have done. Eh, but I have to meet up, Pastor. I too have to, I have to belong. Verse 7 says, We came into this world with nothing. And it is certain we shall live with those on the side of God have learned to be contented. They will work hard, do their best, but they will refuse to put their hands in iniquity just to make up. There are many today. Oh, they come to church, but they have soiled their hands in iniquity just so that they can belong. Today, the grace to change and move to the side of God. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Next one, peacemaker. I'm rounding up now. Those on the side of God are peacemakers. Matthew 5 verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Are you struggling with the area of anger? You are always quarreling. Look at your neighbor. That, he appears that's you they are talking about. There are some people they are just anointed with anger. They are anointed with quarrel. They can't go one whole week without quarreling. It's just not possible. They just enjoy quarreling. 
it's time for you to cross over onto the side of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Second to the last one, holiness. <laughs> holiness. Holiness. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what does what communion does light have with darkness and unrighteousness righteousness with unrighteousness? I say, but Pastor, uh, but it no be wood. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, really? Come out from among them, is what the Bible says, and be ye separate. When Moses made that decision, when he made the decision, I, I choose to suffer with the children of God and, and I'm leaving the palace. He was laying the foundation for greatness. When you choose to be on the side of God and to be holy, God will make you great. Finally, persecution. As I close. Righteousness is not easy. To operate on the side of God, we attract trouble. Hello? To live a honest life will attract... Christianity is not a popularity contest. I have spent time to look at the life of people who choose to be honest. They are always unpopular. Anywhere, in any country, in any gathering, they are always in the minor minority. If you are looking to be popular, you will end up doing what the majority does. Hello? If you are looking to be popular, to be liked, you will become like the majority. Please open to 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Let's read it together. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ shall all that will live godly in Christ shall when Moses made the decision to be on the side of the children of God, he knew that life was going to be tough. But he was ready for the toughness of life. Because God will not forsake his own. Life may be tough, but that toughness, that decision to stand for God is what will open the door of greatness unto you. Let me close with the passage, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 to 12, and then we'll pray. Because some of you may be struggling. Say, Pastor, I can't continue like this. Life, it, to, be, to be righteous is not producing the benefit that I want. This church thing is not working for me. Calm down and hold on to, to God. Matthew 5, 10 to 12. Let's put it on the screen. Matthew 5, 10 to 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And verse 12. Rejoice and be rejoice and be Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God, but that was the beginning of his greatness. He became a miracle worker. He became the prime minister of Israel. Is someone ready to switch to the side of the Lord? All eyes closed. You are here this morning. God has spoken to you through this message in one form or the other. 
Maybe it's time to grow up. Maybe it's time to walk by faith and not by sight. Maybe it's time to give the glory to God of everything that you have accomplished in life. Maybe it's time to walk away from wickedness because the joy of wickedness does not last long. Or perhaps it's time to take a stand for Jesus, for the Lord, and be on the Lord's side. But you're saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want to just surrender my life to Jesus. I want you to help to pray for, for Jesus to save my life. If you are that person, I invite you to come forward. The Bible says, the enemy cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more. Coming to the side of Jesus will make you to hand well in life. Come. I believe there is still one or two people, some more people to come out. You see, as you heard during the sermon, when Moses decided to leave the palace and to put his trust in the Lord, that was the beginning of his greatness. You cannot survive on your own. You cannot make it on your own. You need God Almighty. Please come as I make that final call. Say, Pastor, I am the one. I want to put my life in the hands of Jesus. Come, come. God bless you. God bless you. Come. With God. You will make it. Come, come. Those of you in front, please say after me, my Lord Jesus, I surrender my life unto you. Please be Lord over my life. Save me. Help me. Let there be a turn around in my life. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. God bless you. Please follow. And this is a call for rededication. As you make a decision on whose side are you? Are you struggling with unforgiveness? Are you struggling with telling the truth? Are you struggling with humility? You, 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 you see, you're still proud. Are you struggling with being contented with what God has given you? You don't want to put your hands in unrighteousness just because you want to measure up. Maybe you have been doing that. It's time for you to change. Are you struggling with quarrel? You, you are always quarreling one way or the other. Or are you struggling with, unright, with immorality? I don't know who you are, but today is a day to say, Lord, I have heard your word. I'm switching over to your side. You may be a pastor. You may be a deacon. It does not matter. It's time for you to switch fully to the side of God. If you are one of those who have some challenges in this area, please come. Before I leave the altar, for those of you, you know that you are struggling in one area or the other in this, on these things and you are still standing there. Let me encourage you. You are not alone. Don't say, oh, my neighbor will be looking at me. Oh, you are not alone. There are many. But you have to take a decision for yourself. So that God will know you are ready to move ahead in life. Some years ago, someone preached at a minister's or pastor's conference. Hear this one. Preached at a pastor's conference. All the people there were pastors and ministers. And the Lord laid it in his heart to make a call. The altar was full. And the people there most, actually everyone was a pastor this is the moment where God will say whether you are ready for him or not when you come clean before God I don't know the area that you are struggling come clean to God and come to the front and cry to God mentioning the area where you need help thank you father Lord I commit into your loving hands everyone who is in front right now and those who are standing all over the world saying they struggle in this particular area father the grace to overcome that struggle grant unto them in the mighty name of jesus and as they switch to your side by making those changes the same way you open the door for moses the door of progress the door of joy the door of victory open those same doors to your sons and your daughters in jesus name 
everywhere that doors have been shut to you, the door of progress, by reason of this decision to switch completely to the side of God, may those doors be reopened unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. God bless you.